Buenas noches. Yo soy Laura Bardier, la directora de este arte. Muchas gracias a todos los que nos acompañan esta noche. Tenemos la suerte de tener a Basili Ceretelli, que nos va a hacer un, una presentación del MoMA de Moscú, del Museo de Arte Moderno de Moscú. Va a ser la presentación en inglés, pero habla muy bien en español. ¿No? ¿Verdad? Sí, sí, habla muy bien en español. Así que las preguntas que cuando tengan preguntas pueden hacer, las pueden hacer en español o en inglés. Si quieren, en ruso también, ¿no? Más o menos. Georgiano. Ahí va, oh, George, George, Georgiano, ahí va. Eh, bueno, nada, voy a dar la palabra a Basili, que nos va a contar un poco la historia del museo, cómo nació, cómo se ha desarrollado, algunos de los proyectos que han hecho en los últimos años. Basili es también el nieto de Sura Seretelli, que está en la galería Art Agency, que es un grande artista eh, y bueno, que también después de la charla pueden preguntarle y conocer más y ir a la, a la galería. Muchas gracias a todos. Muchas gracias, Vasily, por estar con gracias. nosotros. Gracias. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, the reason uh, Laura said that I speak uh, Spanish is my wife is Spanish. So, uh, mi mujer es española, yo hablo un poco, entiendo mucho. Uh, and uh, since 95 I've been going... Uh, to Spain, and I don't know, maybe because of that, when I'll show you the presentation of our museum, a lot of projects, uh, we've been doing a lot of projects with Spain and Spanish artists. Uh, it's wonderful in Punta del Este, thank you very much for inviting. Uh, this is my second time in Uruguay, first time I came in the year 2000, and um, it's many changes and it's very beautiful. The most uh, precious thing here, I think it's people, and uh, Today, I helped the weather. I mean, a lot more people at the fair. When it's uh, warm, less. Now, today's. So, tomorrow, we're. I mean, next year, we are celebrating 20 years of uh, Moscow Museum of Modern Art. Um, Moscow Museum of Modern Art was established in uh, December of 1999. And uh, it's a very interesting story because uh, my grandfather, who is uh, Zurab Tsereteli, and uh, you can see, like you presented his work, uh, presented here, he has two sculptures in uh, Montevideo. Uh, he founded the museum. Uh, so this beautiful building that we see that was uh, once uh, believed to have a bedroom of Napoleon, Uh, it's actually, there's a bedroom and there's a legend that he would have stayed there if he had uh, come all the way uh, to this point. Uh, it was a house belonged to the, uh, Peter the Great's family and it was bought by my grandfather in the early 90s. He restored it and gave it as a gift together with a collection of uh, dissident Russian artists and some of avant-garde art to the city of Moscow. And that's how this museum opened its doors and became the first museum, uh, city museum of Russian modern and contemporary art in uh, uh, today's Russia. Because the first uh, museum of contemporary art was in uh, early uh, 20s, but then uh, due to revolution, it was closed down and appropriated by Morozovs. And recently we saw beautiful collection in uh, Louis Vuitton Foundation in Paris of that. Uh, right now, museum has seven buildings. They are all central, and then uh, within 20 minutes of each other, it's very easy to communicate. Um, we have educational center, and in three years, we have reached our uh, visitors of 1.5 million people, which is very uh, good for us because, uh, due to the political situation, 70 years, the contemporary art was not introduced into the Uh, genetic uh, language associations in Russia. So it was very traditional art, very uh, realistic art, which was mainly in Soviet political art. So the underground art, abstract art, or contemporary avant-garde art was not even exhibited. So this was not taught or educated. So this for, for us is very important is to collect, but also to uh, educate and uh, as maximum as possible show young art and uh, show international as well as national. So it's all about dialogue. It's all about opening up uh, borders, opening up uh, new ideas. Here it's a map of Moscow and showing some locations where we're located. So we basically, every, everywhere you are in Moscow, you won't be able to miss our uh, locations and our museum. Uh, 
uh, we had before five uh, spaces, but this year the Moscow government, who is our patron uh, in terms of that gives us funding for uh, survival, uh, gave us two uh, small museums which became part of it, uh, part of uh, our institution. It's one of them is Vadim Sidur Museum, and it's an amazing artist who was a uh, sculptor, beautiful abstract, uh, uh, avant-garde, uh, underground artist, poet, and his studio became part of our museum now, and we are able to show his art, study, and uh, present it worldwide. And the other one, which is completely different, is Dmitry Nalbandyan, who was a very important Soviet artist who was famous for painting a portrait of Stalin. So a large collection of his work became part of uh, our uh, collection as well. So we are able to show dialogue. We don't think that it's, uh, you know, without, you, you cannot ignore the Soviet past. I mean, you have to sh present it within the whole context of the history. So it was for us very good that uh, collection of Nalbanzian Museum became part of our, he's an Armenian artist who was uh, born in Georgia and uh, became very, very, very important artist in, in Soviet times. Um, our collection spans from beginning of 20th century like to 21st, like I said. But pre presently, last six years, we were focusing on young artists buying art from uh, artists who have created in the uh, last 20 years uh, and trying to support it and trying to uh, exhibit it. This is one of the photos from our exhibitions. And um, uh, until 2009, we believed in this uh, structured uh, classical way of throwing chr chronological different exhibitions. But in 2009, we realized that uh, most of our public, it's not like, you know, in New York, MoMA, a lot of tourists go and everything. Russia, still, I mean, thanks to World Cup, and many people have been in, in Uruguay, I've seen a few people <laughs> uh, that have been to Moscow, right? But uh, it's became global, much more global. Until World Cup, very few people visited Moscow in terms of tourism. Uh, St. Petersburg, yes, but Moscow less, and in to going to Museum of Modern Art, even less. So our main public was Moscovites and people around Moscow. So we realized for these people, we need to change the context of the exhibitions. We have to make it more interesting, more dynamic, and shift from doing permanent collection at this place for many years and make it into more uh, dynamic. So we decided to work with uh, our collection as a source for giving chance to new dialogue with the collection to curators, artists, and architects. And one of the first things we introduced is collaboration between architect and um, curator. So the first uh, exhibition like this, which we opened, and it was called Etude to Art Object, and trying to explain the uh, complex history of uh, Russian art through putting together all the movements and all the, uh, everything that we had in our collection. And Bernasconi, who is one of the most important, and he's shown uh, in uh, Venice Biennial many times, he's a very important Russian young architect. We uh, asked him to be an architect of exposition. And here you see all the letters which are in Russian, but it uh, was just beginning of the internet, tagging, and uh, it's 2009, so we tried to bring in dialogue with uh, text, with uh, introduction of um, our collection. And here you see some examples of, uh, of the works we have in our collection and our space, and uh, explain it in terms of this global dialogue. Uh, the second exhibition we, uh, and actually people were not ready for that. I mean, it was quite uh, strange, us trying to show this kind of mixture made very big reaction out of uh, curators and uh, writers. They were very, they didn't like that we mixed classical art and contemporary all at once and it was very revolutionary for that moment in Russia. And uh, uh, so it was quite critical. The second exhibition we did was Doors Open Day and we f focused on the history of our building and we re literally took down the doors and um, here you see the introduction of, again, we asked architect to look at the exposition and you see some of the works. And we only focused on works of, from 1989. So it's our collection uh, was only contemporary works. 
And uh, like there you see uh, Ira Korina who represented Russia in uh, Venice Biennial. It's a tank uh, from the old uh, furniture. And uh, we showed how the museum is changing, how the collection is changing, and how we see the future of our collection. And this uh, was a very welcome exhibition. We got a prize, a uh, curatorial prize of Russia for this uh, show. And uh, for us, was uh, this, 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 the, the tactic is our now style of our exhibitions, where we try to always have a dialogue with young curator, with a team of museum, with uh, research uh, departments of, and combine different institution dialogue. We don't uh, believe in only staying ourselves while collecting the collection. So collection is being collected constantly. Every time we are able to find uh, fundraise, uh, we buy new art from galleries. So if they have, uh, the artists have galleries, we buy from galleries. If we have, um, if they don't have it, definitely from the artists. But it's a very difficult process because it goes all through governmental uh, you know, buying acquisition committee. So it's after three committees, your work, the work finally gets bought. So we always welcome donations and we work a lot with uh, foundations who support us. So here are some other examples of um, different practices and different uh, dialogues we try to present. And uh, if I only knew, this was a very practical uh, exhibition which tried to explain, because after the two exhibitions we did, we understood that families often, uh, you know, the, the parents didn't know how to explain kids or vice versa, so he needed to bring all together all these visitors. And so we did a whole exhibition as a dialogue and as a game. So we focused on main interactions and as a game. So you saw practical drawings. This was uh, in 2010, so it was uh, for all ages group. So it was all about educating our public and bringing new ideas to, and, and having kids bring their family and make it a family uh, reunion in a museum. And it was a very, very successful show. Um, these are examples where we started collaborating not only with our curators, but also with, uh, for example, Dmitry Ozirkov is a deputy director of Hermitage. And Hermitage has been very successful doing beautiful exhibitions, and they've shown uh, young British artists, they've done a lot of international exhibitions curated by Dmitry Ozirkov, but he never worked with the context of Russian art. And since we had a collection mainly of Russian art, we thought it would be interesting to see the uh, school of Hermitage and combine it with the school of Young Museum. So uh, it was the first time ever that Dmitry Ozirkov looked at uh, Russian art and uh, with a background of classical museum and international, made this dialogue happen, and it was a wonderful experience and dialogue of, uh, and you see again, introduction of uh, graffiti art in in, in inside the museum space, and um, very interactive, very um, interesting dialogues. Um, the fifth uh, curatorial exhibition was Dreams for Those Who Are Awake, was uh, trying to show how uh, the world of art is no, not only focused on what we see in a museum collection and everything, but going further. So we, had, uh, we went to a museum of natural history, the curators went, and brought objects from there and tried to put um, a dialogue with all the different objects from 40 million years before to the uh, works of music to uh, sound to everything together and, and try to show the dialogue. So every exhibition is about new experience and showing that through contemporary art and through today's museum you can access every education and through educating we bring kids. So we have a very strong uh, program with the school kids to educate them through our museum into all the different uh, uh, Things. I will talk about the museum, show you the examples, and then I welcome questions because uh, I'm not um, more about doing projects <laughs> than I don't know if I'm um, if it's interesting or uh, the the uh, the big big uh, event for us was the 15th anniversary. So 15th anniversary exhibition was uh, Fortune Museum, and it's uh, actually I've been a director now of, I think 15 years of the museum. And this was the first ever project that I, I did as a curator. 
and it was important to show our collection, our uh, this, but breaking a myth about uh, what is believed to be, because for and we gave everybody who came in fortune cookie, Chinese fortune cookie, which is very famous in New York, every restaurant they give you. In Russia, it just had become uh, something of a trend. Even in uh, Aeroflot, when you flew, they gave you fortune cookie to open. I don't know why, but it's, it was becoming this. So I wanted to, and, and uh, so everywhere you would go, it doesn't matter was Chinese or not, they would give you a fortune cookie. It was a whole uh, boom. And um, so we ordered those fortune cookies, we would give you with a ticket, where it would be words by different, uh, writers, artists, some kind of message. And trying to explain again that it's all about uh, breaking uh, stereotypes. Uh, Fortune Cookie is actually Japanese. It became famous in, uh, in America by, by Chinese made it famous, but it's actually be, was brought, it's a Japanese uh, tradition and uh, it's not a Chinese. So it was about trying to make the typical people what they know about contemporary art in, in Russia uh, come and understand it differently, to look at it from a different perspective and again opening up and making our museum for 15th anniversary completely naked in terms of opening it up completely. And here you see uh, our drawing collection showing uh, media, uh, media uh, from the beginning of origin of our museum about our uh, press and everything that we've done. Uh, different, uh, so after all this uh, curatorial and very uh, uh, like strict uh, exhibitions, we decided to uh, give uh, Elena Yaichnikova, who is a very, very, very unique uh, curator, a chance to experiment. And what she did was she broke our collection and gave each, in 2016, each, um, she selected uh, seven artists and gave them a chance to curate their own vision of our collection. So it was an uh, artist projects working with the collection. It was a wonderful experience, and again, it uh, gave a chance, it was a commission work, so it gave a chance to artists create their new work. Some of it was, uh, became part of our collection, we bought it later. Some of it was, uh, went to others, but here you would, would see beautiful uh, interactions, and again, making it not so serious, making uh, ability, giving ability and chance to artists to really work with a, some heritage, I mean, we're giving them a ability to interact with that heritage, not, not kicking them out, but bringing them in. And um, so that, that was one of, the, one of the exhibitions. And uh, here you will see some examples again of uh, different focus on different collaborations and different exhibitions where we try to uh, keep this message. One of the strong um, strength of our collection is uh, naive art. Naive art, so we have a painting by Rousseau, which we are very are proud of, but also we have a very important Georgian naive artist, Piros Mani. And uh, so it's one of the things that we study is the dialogue between naive art and contemporary um, message. Uh, a lot of um, projects that we do with kids, like I already said, and uh, our ex museum does 70 exhibitions per year, which is a lot. Primarily, it's big exhibitions, but also a lot of young. Uh, we have a program called Debut, which works with uh, artists who are given the first chance to do a young artist promotion and exhibition with young curators. So it's a very big project of a uh, museum to integrate. Uh, there's not so many collectors, and unfortunately only one, well, in Russia, for such a big Russia, there's only one art fair, and uh, foundations are just starting to support, so museums and art galleries are the ones who are helping the, uh, the artists um, get themselves established. So for us, it's very important to integrate. Here you see the map of Russia, and this is what exhibitions we've done uh, in 2018. So. We went to Kazan, to Yuzhny Sakhalinsk, to Japan. So it's even though we are city museum and small museum for we believe is that whole uh, Russian territory should be involved in understanding contemporary art because it's very different for Moscow and St. Petersburg. When you go outside of those regions, unfortunately it's not accessible. So we are trying to do everything to 
present the uh, new uh, new dialogues there and thanks to biennial of young art which we organized together with another museum uh, called Rosizo in Russia and uh, it's a special biennial for artists under 35 international so I hope uh, for the next one which is going to be not this summer next summer uh, artists from Uruguay who are under 35 will apply. It's called youngart.ru and it's a beautiful uh, chance for artists to come in the summer and work and experience and do beautiful projects uh, in, in, in Russia. Uh, these are some examples that we did uh, exhibitions in, um, in different parts of Russia and again very important for us is how we show the art and how we integrate architecture, lighting, uh, words, presentation. This is actually an exhibition that just two weeks ago opened in uh, Yuzhny Sakhalinsk, which is 11 hour flight from Moscow. Uh, and it was called Territory of Words. So we believe, uh, and it's uh, in the Chekhov's museum, so we try to combine words and art and poetry and theater because uh, uh, it's very important for us to work with the theater art as well so it's kind of multi multi dimensional uh, museum also does projects around the world so if you've been uh, in uh, venice in uh, 2013 we did a project there um, believing in dialogue and showing the art so it's for us would be great to and we've i've already made so, some connections here to do latin american shows which are very unknown uh, in russia we will be happy to you know present art from uruguay as well and we've been discussing to do shows there it's all about showing dialogue and showing global global uh, and hopefully sometimes we bring some Russian art as well, not only to fair, but also to museum and uh, permanently. This is our educational center, which we are very proud of. And uh, that's our library. We do their programs. We opened the program with Goethe Institute, which is a two year ongoing program, which shows all the contemporary exhibitions with uh, uh, German artists. And uh, we're doing now art residencies and uh, scholarly dialogues with MIT and other universities about research and um, research of Russian art and in general art. So it's, uh, if people want to study and research, can they can apply. And we gave a grant and they come to Russia and they work with us on uh, studying and uh, doing research and publications. So these are some of the, the programs and things we do. It's, uh, it's, it's brand new, it's opened this uh, summer and we were very lucky. We collected uh, almost uh, $700,000 from private, private donations and were able to change this building and uh, make it into this space. Uh, we have special program with actually, we work with the Russian Jewish Congress where, uh, uh, so we have different programs where we do it with different institutions. Um, a lot of kids programs, a lot of programs for uh, families and um, I would love to answer to some questions because like this we make it not only monologue and uh, about different artworks, different, I mean any, anything that you ask <laughs> I'll be happy to answer or uh, communicate, you know. Um, uh, these are some examples. I'm just showing you different exhibitions we've done. It's so many and uh, so different. Next year we will have a Plenza show. We will have a Komar Melamid show. So we all invite you to come if you ever. Uh, we'll be happy to, you know, give you a tour, show you. Uh, one of the big shows that we just had last year it was Demons in the Machine. It was all related to new technology. Uh, artists working with bitcoins, with science. Our, uh, research, so it was an introducing as well dialogue with uh, machines and uh, internet, robotics. Uh, big show of general rehearsal. It's a show of three acts, it was uh, three, three institutions, uh, three collections. One is Cadiz, which is San Francisco and uh, Paris. Uh, our collection and VAC, VAC Foundation. I think for everybody it's important to write it down in 2019. Uh, there will be a new beautiful building with a collection, multidiscipline institution will be born in Moscow. Renzo Piano is doing the building. 
They have amazing collaboration. The founder is uh, Leonid Michelson, who owns a private gas company, but he also, uh, he has from Giacometti to contemporary art, but the institution is specially for promoting and developing multilingual dialogue. They have a foundation in Venice, so when you go in Venice Biennial this May, uh, you should go visit their uh, Palazzo, they just opened it, and they, they are doing many, many projects worldwide with new museum, with MoMA, with uh, uh, New York, with Tate, with, I mean globally. It's a new institution, many people don't know about it, but I think after they open their permanent uh, space, it will be a very, very unique uh, and interesting. We did an exhibition with them and a dialogue and uh, many projects with this institution. They are one of our patrons. Uh, we, you know, and this is, I'm showing different examples of pri uh, exhibitions that all happened last year. Uh, we do a lot of personal shows. So Haim Sokol is a young artist. We did his retrospective. Sergei Sapozhnikov also is a young artist and we also uh, did his uh, exhibition and it was presented very in a interactive uh, through theater, through dance. Um, These are different uh, projects that are in during the uh, uh, Young Art Biannual. So the, the, we had six, and it will be the seventh will be next uh, next year. And we had different curators. Uh, uh, David Elliott was uh, curator, last curator, who was over 35, you know. And then we decided that to give young curators chance as well. So Nadim Saman and uh, Luris uh, Calabro Visconti from Italy, they were last two curators who were under 35, maybe next year. We had very successful of Shepard Ferry show, just now one of the largest uh, shows uh, of his work. Uh, Joseph Boyce, this is some international examples of the w collections and uh, collection actually of um, uh, Kaim Dos Mayo from uh, Center of Contemporary Arts from Madrid show was a very global dialogue and it showed some Latin American collection from there, from Arco. Antonio Gaudi, we had very beautiful, so, and now uh, Jacques Lipschitz is right now on. Uh, if anyone comes to Moscow until uh, end of February, we'll be able to see Jack Lipschitz's retrospective that we are having uh, on, and Cosme de Barano is a curator. So for us, it's another thing is to work global with global curators, with global, um, and which I didn't mention as well, is a program, educational program, with uh, and working with the people with disabilities, which is also very important for us, and we do tours for not only blind, but deaf, people and it's special again uh, time and uh, scientifically developed exhibitions who integrate all kinds of uh, people with uh, abilities and any kind of uh, whoever wants to come they are have an access to come and and work as well as uh, school of uh, contemporary art is also with the museum which teaches curators and artists so it's a very big institution 400 people work it's uh, quite large, and uh, we try to be young, dynamic, uh, and uh, you know, in interesting and uh, interactive. So, if you have any questions, please, uh, I'll be happy to ask, answer. And if you want to hear more about, I don't, I don't know what kind of uh, lectures were before or. Uh, uh, Hi. That's our publishing. Hello. Uh, what you can tell us a little about um, the Russian art. Hello, hello, no, hola. Uh, about the Russian, the Russian artists you have, because it seems that it was the first time. No? See, uh, seems that it was the first time the Russian artists that are in your museum were seen in Russia. Is that right? I, I didn't understand the first part. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, le uh, let us know a little about the uh, Russian artists you have in your museum. Because I, I, I think that it was the first time they were seen in Russia. Uh, uh, there's several programs that we have. Uh, one is the collection of art just uh, from beginning of 20th century to uh, 1990s, let's say, and, and contemporary. There are a lot of artists that were shown 
in uh, well, Malevich uh, and all the avant-garde, they have been shown before us uh, by Tretyakov Gallery and Russian Museum and so on. But contemporary collections were not shown until we were uh, opened. After us, Tretyakov Gallery opened their permanent contemporary art collection and they have beautiful collection now. And uh, Russian Museum does great exhibitions and there are many private, I mean, there's uh, now private museums. But what we pride ourselves, we do a lot of exhibitions of artists like, for example, Leonid Kasalapov, who is an artist from New York, immigrated, did Sots art. He never had a show. He's already uh, in uh, established art, never had a show in Russia, and we're doing his, we did his first show. Leonid Sokov, first show we did. You know, he lived in New York. We are doing um, Tabakman, who is an artist who has been living since 1970. Uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in New York. Komar Melamit, they never had a show in Russia. We are doing their show. So there's many, many artists that should have had a shows decades ago. But unfortunately, history played in such part that they were never uh, got a chance. They never had it. So we are working a lot about bringing artists that are outside of the borders that are unknown to the generations of young, middle, any generations. They knew only artists that were uh, widely accepted by Soviet regime kind of thing. So we're trying to introduce them to. Hi. Hi. I want to know if you have uh, in your, the collection uh, Latin American um, art of modern or contemporary, of, uh, if you have made some exhibition of uh, Latin American art in, in the past or are you planning for in the future? Uh, you know, we, uh, we buy mainly and they give us money to buy Russian art. So everything that we buy, we buy mainly in a collection of, uh, but the dialogue and exhibitions, we do global. And uh, we had uh, Tamayo exhibition, we had uh, Mata exhibition, we had uh, uh, in different exhibitions, we had artists who were from Latin America, but, and, but we don't have in a collection, in a permanent collection, we don't have uh, very, very few, I mean, examples. Also, we publish a magazine. In Russian, soon will be in English, but uh, it will be. Um, so if you have any, I invite you to come to, to Moscow for our 20 years anniversary celebration. <laughs> She wanted to ask, but she's not, she's very shy with English. So she wanted to know more about um, contemporary art, Russian contemporary art. If you can tell us something more. Well, uh, Russian contemporary art, uh, <laughs> now you see, I mean, it's, I think in, the, in a way it's a global, I mean, global, you know, there's global art. And basically uh, the fairs, biennales, they make the boundaries and museum exhibition exchanges. Most of our Russian artists are, you know, many of them, I mean, not most of them, are trying to integrate in Venice by annual, be global, presented. Uh, if you come to Russia and you see what is general theme, of course, they share the same uh, worries or same problems. So technology, some people deal with technological, social. Uh, there's less political because, uh, a lot of them who, who did political art are doing it more, going in Berlin or something like that. Not so much dialogue about politics for some reason. It used to be five years ago, six years ago, you would see a lot of political art. Now it's less. Now it's more about social, more about historical dialogue, more about uh, trying to look inside the past and find connections between uh, uh, what they believe the artists themselves and some kind of uh, dialogue with their historical artistic past, which uh, you see similarities all over uh, all over the world that artists think this similarly. Um, they, they, there's also a lot of artists, I mean, of course, dealing issues with social issues of inequality or feminism or uh, there was a very 
not correct uh, law passed about um, promotion of uh, gays uh, in the kids, something like that was a very bad law, which we protested. And, and there are a lot of artists that uh, voice their things. And uh, you know, it's it's uh, it's all about uh, different pro different problems that are there. Artists try to you know focus on that. And uh, even though we are a city museum, we don't have a censorship. So luckily, I mean, we are doing as much as possible to deliver the message of the artist. So uh, for us, it's very. I mean, we try to you know do our job and present the voice of the artist or the curator as much. Now actually have, we have a very good show uh, opened with the French Embassy about 1968 and showing the history of the demonstrations, what is happening now in France, for example, it's very similar happened in 1968. So again, opening up the dialogue, about, so reflecting so people can reflect through the history of 68 about today's uh, things that happened in Russia as well, and openness and what happens when you, uh, you know, disrupt free voice or free speech. So all these issues, we try to help uh, artists deliver to the public or to the message or to whoever, uh, you know, listens <laughs> or sees. ¿Alguien más tiene alguna pregunta? No? Ok. Bueno, muchas Thank gracias. Thank you very much. Thank and, you very uh, much. Hope you all come to Moscow. Thank you. Gracias.